<laughs> Rasty McGibbon with Women's Division One head coach at Liberty University, Chris Lowe's. Chris, thanks very much for coming on. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, in, in the back of your mind, if you play long enough, the day would ultimately come at the Nationals when you would not advance. Um, you, you have run into two red hot goaltenders in two nights. And if I do the math really quickly, I think 137 shots unofficially in two nights with cumulatively four goals. What, what, how, how do you put it in perspective? Our shooting percentage is a little low. <laughs> um, no, today was a, today was a tough one. Uh, right, and I, it, it's still fresh. Right, We've got girls out here and still in their gear and, and dealing with families. And um, you know, that's the, the thing about these tournaments, right? You've got five divisions, but you got what 80 teams here, and you get five champions. Right, right? we've been fortunate enough to be on the, the right side of that for for a few years, and uh, I don't know if that makes it harder, but yeah, I just you know, I'm proud of our girls. Right, we we played two really tough games, really two really talented teams, and. Obviously, we, we had our struggles finding that finding that final touch, and you know we thought we had won an overtime there that was waved off, and um, you know that's just that's just sports, and I think that's especially playoff hockey, right, where you just you know it's going to come down to a bounce or a, a weird goal or something, and they got a rebound off a off a good shot and, and tucked it home. You know, not not advancing into the national final in no way erases the legacy that you and the girls that have come through your program have established at Liberty. Um, it was funny, and, and I'll tell you this, someone someone with the league actually said a couple days ago, if Liberty wins, we're gonna have to get a new banner for them and have the print on it smaller. Um, so, I mean, how, how do you now put into perspective the legacy that you've created um, there at Liberty University. And you know, and, and having known each other so long, I know it goes so far beyond sports. It goes investment in young women's lives. But how do, how do you put that in perspective now that you have a chance to kind of step back and know that you're not playing tomorrow? Yeah, so I think a couple things, you know, I, the, the mission at Liberty is to train champions for Christ. Um, and above all else, I think we've done that successfully over the last uh, seven years. And uh, we've won a lot of hockey games. We've won a few titles as well. And um, But I, I think that that's something that we've been on point with the mission. And our girls are are uh, invested in that. Um, and then I think the other thing is that that group of seniors, right? Like that was kind of the message. Uh, and because of... The, the quality of girl and, and hockey player as well. I haven't had to give many losing speeches, right, in the right. past few years, but I think that was the message is like, you look at this graduating class and what they've accomplished and it's it's unprecedented. Take, 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 take a moment and recognize those young women. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, my no, brain's a little to. foggy. Yeah, no, I want so, you to. Right, like, you know, Jan Truder, uh, Carly Glover, our captain, Reese Spanier, Amanda Story, one of the best goalies to ever play in the ACHA, uh, Priscilla Zeef, uh, Aislinn Stretch, one of the best defensemen in the country, uh, without a doubt. Um, you know, those are our graduating girls, and you look at what they've accomplished. Again, winning national titles, but but also the culture they've. You know, we talk about setting the standard, and I'm proud of our girls. I think yeah. we've we we have defined the standard uh, in recent years, and uh, I, I think you know I'm, I'm proud of us pushing the league to new heights, right? And you know that's a that's a great team we just lost to, and they're going to face another really talented team in Adrian tomorrow, and with very know, little sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick turnaround for yeah. them. So, uh, but uh, you know I I'm proud of where the league's going and these teams, and you know the you get to know these teams. And you get, you know, there, there's a small part of me, a very small part, that's that's uh, that's happy for some of those girls on Minot that we've got to see kind of develop over the league, and you, you know, you kind of grow, build relationships with the staff, and so uh, you know, I'm thankful for them. It, it hurts, you know, re really bad, I think, in our locker room, but. Um, a couple things, you know, last year um, when I spoke to um, Coach White from Midland, he verbalized the tremendous amount of respect that he had for you, not only as a coach and a person. Tonight, when Minot won, you came out on the ice. I saw you and um, Ryan Miner 
from from um, Minot embrace each other. There, tell me about the level of respect. You know, at least in in in, in the uh, of the four or five teams that have gone yeah. to the semis. I mean, you guys know each other in and out. Ryan said, "You know what? I'm talking to Chris probably probably once a week." You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I said? I said, "At least he texts you back." No, I'm joking. <laughs> but anyway, no, no, no. But, but but tell me about that respect. Yeah. No. Uh, well, I guess it starts right. Yeah. It, it's a cool part of sports, right? You and as a coach, that's a different side. When you're a player, you, you know, you build your community in your locker room. Right. Right. And I think as a coach and you start scheduling and you know I've got an inner circle of coaches that I really trust and I, I you know I kind of go to and uh, Whitey's in that group right ton of respect for what what they did and what the program they've built and you know it, it, it's going to hurt tomorrow to have to watch that national title game. But, uh, you know, I, I, I can't think of two better guys than Ryan Miner and, and Carter at Adrian. And, you know, just to look at the programs they've built. And I've got to see it, right? I've been in the league since uh, since both of them started. And yeah. just to see them take those steady steps and, you know, competing with them in recruiting and then during the season. And so, yeah, that's, that's a special part of sports, right? That bond. And, um, you know, you see it with our girls, right? As much as it hurts, some of them are, are, are happy for those minor girls right. that we just battled hard for 100 minutes and, and that's a really hard perspective to have mm -mm. when you want something so bad yeah 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 and no and, and again I think that's when we talk about our girls that's that's the mission is to set the standard and I think our girls have done an incredible job of, of, of being sportsmen right and it's it's very easy to have great sportsmanship when you win yeah it was. Um, but when you lose that gets tested and uh, you know I'm proud of our girls and the way they they carry themselves. Last question yeah. for you. Um, you know, I, and, and I don't know whether you've ever thought about this, but you know, when, when you when you take the four guys that you've mentioned, Coach White, um, Adrian, uh, Ryan Miner, yourself, do you ever take a step back and realize how how incredible ambassadors you are for women's hockey in America? I mean, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to use the stupid quote again, but you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, and you guys pump the tide up. You're you're elevating the level of hockey. I mean, you know, you you, you look at any of the, of the of the ten teams that are here in women's one, anybody could have won, and, and and I think that 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 shows that the disparity that was here prior to COVID is now gone. Anyone can win here, but you but you know you like you said you set the standard along with these other guys. Did, did you ever think about that? Yeah, you know, I think that's the thing with coaching, right? And you, you do it enough time and it, 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 you know, a lot of coaching is about more than the wins and losses. And, you know, it's a big responsibility, I think, um, shepherding a group of young women, right. you know, college age women. And, and I such think that's a, a great word for it. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I look, you know, it's a, it, yeah, it's a huge honor, but it's a responsibility. And um, to just, you know, you look at Carly Glover, right, left this game again with a knee injury. Same thing happened in the semifinals last year. And, you know, I just, I, I've got to witness firsthand the work she put in right. to rehab back and to see her going through that. But, but yeah, that's part of the responsibility. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see there's so many other high character coaches in the league too. Uh, and I, I think that's, yeah, there's a brotherhood there, sisterhood with, uh, with the other coaches across the country. Well, hey, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Okay. For the record, 2018, 2019, 21, 22, 23, national champions, Chris Lowe's, class act, Liberty University Women's Division One. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Rasta.